For the second time in U.S. history, a major party nominated a woman for president, and for the second time, she lost. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted. Democrat Kamala Harris fell short to Republican Donald Trump on Tuesday. This is not the outcome we wanted. Hillary Clinton did likewise in 2016. The reason for Harris's loss were many. An Edison Research exit poll showed deep concerns about the state of the economy and voters' financial situation were driving factors. We also have to ask ourselves, you know, what, you know, the role that, you know, sexism in particular, like, might actually be playing in terms of people's preferences. Andrew Gillespie teaches political science at Emory University. She said it's too soon to tell what role prejudice against women played in the 2024 contest. So we'll know sort of whether or not people's uh, suspicions or stereotypes about machismo um, actually have um, any impact at all on vote choice. But sexism persists. An October Reuters Ipsos poll found a 55 percent majority of registered voters said sexism was a major problem in the U.S. 15 percent said they would not be comfortable voting for a female president. The light of America's promise will always burn bright. And the U.S. has yet to elect one. It's not alone in this. Women are heads of government in just 13 of the 193 member states of the United Nations. The number has, however, been steadily rising since 1990. American women also trail men in terms of pay and representation in government and management. Women make up just over half of the U.S. population. The U.S. Congress in 2024 was just 28 percent female, and that's the highest percentage in history. It was not until 1974 that a woman was elected governor of a U.S. state, according to the Center for American Women in Politics. In the corporate suite, Pew Research found in 2024 women made up just 11 percent of chief executives at Fortune 500 companies and 30 percent of those firm's board members. And the discrepancy may come at a cost. A 2023 McKinsey study showed that companies with over 30 percent women executives were more likely to outperform companies with fewer women executives or none. They are out of their minds. In her race for the White House, Kamala Harris had hoped to tap into anger about the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to overturn the federal right to abortion two years ago. Why exactly is it that they don't trust women? But the issue did not drive the turnout the Democratic vice president needed to win. According to an Edison Research exit poll, nearly a third of voters said the economy was their top issue. Only 14 percent said it was abortion. And while women voters did prefer Harris over Republican Donald Trump, 53 percent to 45 percent, she captured a smaller share of women voters compared to what President Joe Biden received in 2020. Trump also improved on his share of women voters by three percentage points compared to 2020. The conservative court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade in 2022 triggered a wave of restrictive abortion laws in Republican-controlled states. Before Tuesday, seven states put the issue of abortion rights directly to voters. Abortion rights campaigns won every time. He brags about overturning Roe v. Wade in his own words, quote, I did it and I'm proud to have done it. In her campaign, Harris said Trump would roll back access to reproductive health care and promised to bring back a federal law restoring abortion rights nationwide. For his part, Trump has said, leave the issue to the states. And I did that. Now the states are voting. Exit polls showed more voters said they trusted Harris compared to Trump on the issue of abortion. But election results showed some felt they could support abortion rights and Trump at the same time. He won in both Missouri and Florida, states where abortion rights ballot measures received a majority of support. Although the Florida vote fell short of the 60 percent threshold needed to pass. For the next four years, it appears abortion laws will likely remain a state-by-state -state patchwork. Abortion rights advocates say state-level elections will become all the more important to preserving abortion access under Trump. That includes elections for state Supreme Court judges and constitutional officers. We love babies, yes we do! Meanwhile, some anti-abortion groups say they're keen to push for new policies under the next Trump administration which begins on January 20th.